Welcome to Off The Cuff, everybody. Here we go. You got your scripture? Yes. Okay. Now, when we read the scripture, this is just what I think. You know, we're spiritual beings. And the scripture says that it's alive. The word is alive. And um, it also says that there's many things that are hidden. And they have to be re revealed by the spirit. So, yeah. Hey? That's good. <laughs> so you have to be filled with a spirit to receive. But a lot of people just read it and um, they don't, um, they remember it and it's a memory and they call the memory knowledge. And as much as you can remember, then you have knowledge and then they turn it around and say that it's wisdom. But it's all the wisdom, the real wisdom and the knowledge is imparted in the spirit and it's infused through the spirit into us. So we can say like, do you understand that? Mm. So we say like, Father, and we pray, but we're talking as well, please reveal stuff to me so it can be of value as it comes through. And it's not, not of yourself. But when you get the <clears throat> scripture, Torah, you've got to look right into it and you've got to look at the words. And <clears throat> for me, you can say them over and over again, the words each out of each verse, and you get what's hidden because it is hidden. So we're going to talk tonight. My favourite subject, one of my favourite subjects is Behavior. Behavior. <laughs> yeah. What are you laughing at? <laughs> well, you know, it's all about behaviour. So for us as men and for the ladies as women, now, we have to actually get to the scripture. We have to ask the Father to reveal this to us. Like you can be sitting there and just watching this and think, oh, what a wank. You're all nuts, you know. Yeah. But to me, to me, the way I look at it, we have to come to the scripture and ask the Father to give us what it really means so we can understand his mind. Mm -hmm. So most of the scripture talks about the behaviour of many, many people, you know, especially the Israelites and, and all the families throughout the scripture. It talks about behaviour, how to behave, what's correct, you know. So... As this comes to us tonight, it's up to us to take it in for me. Like I'm reading this, it's from the Father to me. And it's not to point at anyone or say you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. It's all about love to get, because Torah is instruction, to get this instruction and to be able to apply it and know that what we're applying is correct, is right. And as we do that, there are benefits that come. He says, I'll walk before you and I'll be watching behind you. So if we're going to go into the Torah, it's going to cause a lot of people trouble, but we're, we're just saying what what has come from the Father, what he expects of us. And it's not up to us to get upset about it and take it personal, you know, and go off our face. It's for us to receive it and say, hey, you know, am I doing this? Do I look at it this way? 
you know. We're going to talk about the men tonight and the ladies a bit, uh, but there's more. I'm only going to do two chapters, but there's more. There's more stuff about the men in chapter three on. So <clears throat> it's a behaviour that we need to adopt. And you know, I've spoken to you about the race. The race is a behaviour. The boot camp is learning a behaviour. Then after boot camp, you can become a soldier. And it's, we're in a war, but the war is behaviour. Mm. Hey? Mm. So our weapons aren't like warfare. They're wonderful weapons that are very, very powerful. The most powerful thing on the earth is love. So we have to learn to tap in to that. We have to have the correct answers. We have to have come to the place where we understand this is what the Father is saying to me about my behaviour. I have to adjust myself to be what he wants me to be. And it's not you're this and you're that and judging and judging. It's instruction that can come to us and we can receive it and we can benefit so much more in life because in being alive, being alive, you know, that you're alive. Um, a lot of people, are walk, they, you know, they call the sinners the walking dead. You know, but, but you can be walking on the earth alive through this word if you look at it. So turn your scripture to First Timothy, everybody, chapter 1. You know, I don't know how this is going to work out. I've, I've read through it and I've got the gist of what Yahushua said to me and that's the beauty about this that, you know, you can hear his voice. Mm. And it's up to everybody tonight to to understand, is this Yahushua talking? Is this what his will is? Is this what he wants of us? Or is it just Chris having a blah blah rave? Are we vessels that are we vessels that he uses? You know? So there's different types of vessels, aren't there? <coughs> so I've looked up the words, but how this is all going to come out, I'm just going to leave it to Yahusha um, because it is off the cuff. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 1. Shawl, an emissary of Yahusha. Okay? Shawl, an emissary of Yahusha Messiah. Okay? Shawl is an em emissary. Now, how many people can say that? Well, you know, we look, we look, we look. We're supposed to be emissaries. You know, Shaul, an emissary of Yahushua Messiah, according to the command of Elohim, our Saviour, and of the Master, Yahushua Messiah, our expectation. So we go through that again. We, we want to get out of this. There's some command in here. And it's coming from Yahushua. And it's coming through Shaul. And he's declaring that he's an emissary of Yahushua Messiah according to the command of Elohim our Saviour and the Master of Yahushua Messiah. So it's according to Elohim that, I mean, what happened to Shaul? He was knocked off his horse, the light came and all that. Remember all that? So wang, bang, he's declaring who he really is and that he's been made an emissary by Yahushua himself. A lot of people say, well, Shaul didn't see Yahushua. But he did. Through the light, he saw him. Yeah? You can interrupt me whenever you want to, if you want to say something, mate. Mm. So is that ringing? Yes. And he is, he is our expectation. What's in an expectation? His, sec his second coming, he's coming back for us. We're going to be with him. We're going to rise out of the ground. We're going to be with him. He is our expectation because he was the first to rise from the dead. There's so much in there, just in the words, if you look at the words and see 
what they are, yeah? Mm. To Timothy, so he's sending this to Timothy, which is obvious, a genuine child in the belief. So he's a genuine child, oh, to be called a genuine child in the belief. So this belief is something that's not of the earth. It's a belief that's, you know, Yahushua has given us instructions, commands. They're not of the earth. They're written in this book, but they're not of the earth. They can only come into a being, a human being. And we can only appropriate them by belief. We can only experience them and get the value of them by belief. So the whole thing is by belief. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> totally. You can't get it any other way. Yeah. So you've got to go in the door, haven't you? Mm. You know what the door is? Everyone knows what the door is, the immersion, blah, 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 blah. Citizen of Israel, blah, blah, blah. It's the only way you can have access and understand the things that he's saying to us. Now, what have you got out of those two verses, mate? Uh, I well, finished the second one. Yeah. Oh, it's see how much about there is. Mm. Yeah, see how much there is in there. Mm. There's so many things in the words, and if the spirit's flowing. Mm. It, you're feeling that he's flowing to you, you're getting stuff? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Right. To Timothy, a genuine child in the belief, favour, favour is pleased with, delight in, desire. Imagine Yahushua desiring us. Have pleasure. Willing, wish, all those words, pleased with, delight in. He wants to delight in us. Why? Because we're hearing what he's saying. And when we respond and do it on the earth, he's delighted in us. He's so happy that we are seeing what he's saying because this is the deliverance. It's all about the behaviour. The behaviour is deliverance. It's such amazing stuff. If you just look at the words and go over and over and think on the words and think of the background of the words and what's going down, what he's saying. And this is, he's speaking to Shaul and he's letting us know that he chose Shaul. Mm. You know? And he's bringing this word. And from way back then, it's still relevant today. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> so favour, compassion. We need Yahushua's compassion, loving understanding. We need that. We need it so much to give you life because you feel in this world the pressure that's happening, you know, the tribulation is coming and the pressure through so many things, you feel it. You really feel. And to get his compassion and favour where things work, things work out, he shows you ahead, ah, oh, look, that's what's going to happen. I know because I've seen this over and over and over again. It's going to happen. Yeah? So peace. So we have he's wishing Timothy, favour, compassion and peace. But you don't have the hassles in your mind in spite of what's going on in the world. It's horrendous. They even showed something on the computer today uh, where Muslims are eating cut up Negroes. It was on, on the computer, you know, this is one of the latest things they're doing. They're eating flesh. And it's, oh, it's just so hideous and dreadful. So though all those things can worry your mind and worry your heart, but he says, don't worry. And through this we can see peace from Elohim our Father and Yahushua Messiah our Master. So that's what everybody is being wished that's watching this DVD. I hope you can all feel 
his genuine love because that's what he wishes us. He wishes us to be in those, in his favour, in his compassion and in his peace and he's telling us how much he loves us. Can you feel it? Mm. Verse 3, as I appealed to you when I went into Macedonia to remain in Ephesus in order to command some not to teach differently. So here's the command. See, up in verse 1, according to a command of Elohim. So here's again, um, I appeal to you when, you know, in order to command some not to teach differently. So what's that all about again? A command? A command is sort of legal, is sort of military, uh, and some people were teaching differently even way back then, like we have now. There are so many people teaching a different thing, aren't there? Mm. And it can be so frustrating. Yeah. But here's that command again. There's commands we need to follow. What's the command? There's more further down about command, so we'll go into that. Verse 4. Not to pay, not to pay attention to fables and endless genealogies. Now, how many people are going on about the Jewish genealogies? Mm. Oh, you know, when are they going to see that you have to all go in the same door? That Israel was giving, given the commandments and the way to behave. The commands are behave. That's what I wanted to say. The commands are a behaviour again, not to teach differently. There's the behaviour. People are behaving the wrong way. It's all about behaviour. You know, it's coming to us this message about behaviour, not to pay attention to fables and endless genealogies. How many people talk about fables and things that have no association with the Torah? Mm. You know, that's a behaviour, isn't it? Mm. It doesn't mm. want us to do that. And these endless genealogies, you know, we can only go in the door. Israel was told to give the message of love, the covenant of love to the world, and they didn't, you know. So now we have the situation that we have, which is just crackers. You know, we, the two sticks can only become one by the spirit through the water. That's it, isn't it? Mm. Right. <clears throat> not to pay attention to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes, don't they? Yeah. They're all at each other's throat on the internet rather than an administration of Elohim which is in belief. Hey, let's look at that again. <clears throat> <clears throat> rather than an administration of Elohim which is in belief. Administration, Mark. Mm. What's administration of Elohim? I think of paperwork when I hear that word. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. So mm. he's saying <clears throat> this is the answer and the opposite to what they're doing, talking about fables and endless geology, genealogies which cause disputes, rather than an administration of Elohim, which again is in belief. So the administration of Elohim can only come through belief. It is non-active from a worldly point of view. They have their own version of administration, you know, but this administration is spiritual. It is not earthly. And we have to believe to get the essence. It's like diving into a pool of water. Get on the diving board and you spring off and you're in. So you've got to dive into the administration to experience it. When you dive in the water, it all comes over you and you feel alive and fresh and you come up and it's great. It's refreshing. Mm -hmm. Same with the right administration. You've got to dive into it to experience it. It's no good yapping this word, 
yap, yap, yap. It's all written down, but it's hidden. And it's no good just yap, yap, yapping, remembering or using it at people. That's not what it's. And everyone's quoting scriptures at each other and they have no idea of what they're saying. Mm-hmm. They have no idea of the meaning of these things. They think they do, but it can only be revealed through the Spirit, not through man's um, uh, books that men write. Uh, it can't be. It's great to get information. It's great to have knowledge. But they have to be put to work. They have to be put to practice. Like when you learn a new haircut, you've got to practice over and over again so you can perfect it with all different types of hair and all different shapes of heads. You can still put that new style on different people. So the word has to be experienced and learned and practised. Otherwise, it's, no, it's, it's a dead. Mm. It's no value. And it has to be through... Belief. That's it. Mm. Spot on, Mark. It's got to be through belief. This experience isn't available to those that won't go this way. You've got to go in and experience it. Dive in mm. to administration. Now, administration, what's administration? <laughs> well, he's using it in the same sentence as people who are arguing about genealogy. So I'd say if you administer something, we're not talking about the man-made lineage of genealogies there, crapping on about. He's talking about an administration. So he's administering you in belief, like you're his because you say you're, he's yours. <laughs> yeah. It's not about your bloodline or anything like that. It's, it's, you probably got the definition of administration. That'd be better. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, uh, yeah, that's yeah. good what you're saying. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. mate. It's great. Fantastic. Mm. So this is, this is from the dictionary and number one says, it explains what it is. Management of the affairs of an organisation such as business or institution. Management of the affairs of an organisation such as business or institution. Again, management of the affairs of an organisation such as business or institution. How can you interpret that into the word, into the administration, what he says, rather the administration of Elohim, which is in belief. How do you interpret that? Management of the affairs of an organisation such as business or institution. It's all about Israel. And Israel is no longer a bloodline. Israel is a belief. You yeah. end, you graft it in by belief. Yeah. 99, well, maybe not 99%, but most people are going to be uh, Gentiles, Ephraim, outsiders, not of the bloodline, and it says in Scripture that those are the people that most of the covenant is going to be working through. Okay, so there's the covenant. It's all working through all those people that you said have come in. What would be the administration? They're all all in Israel now. Mm. All those people have come into Israel. What is the administration? Now, all those people have come into Israel. You can see on the internet. And they're bloody blaring and quoting scriptures. And what should the administration be? And it can only be through belief. Um, a, the behaviour of the reign, the behaviour of the kingdom, the, the way to walk and talk and present yourself and... Uh, yeah? Yeah. So if you come into an organisation or an institution or a business, yeah. you have to know how to behave, otherwise you just right, you've got it. get out. Yeah. So if Israel is that entity, then you need to know how to behave like a true Israelite. How far away are they from it, from what you can see? I can't stand them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even go on there hardly ever anymore. Yeah, I just, I just, and not because I'm up myself or above them, I just, I just... Spent so many years just full on in there, and now it's like I neglected my family. And I, I think I see them all crapping onto each other, and I just you have it, it's fine. I was, 
you know. Yeah. So to answer your question, they're a long way away. That's good. Well, it's great to hear what you're saying too. But when you see the compassion that he's given us tonight... I need to have more compassion. <laughs> can, can you feel that? Yeah. A newness like coming yeah. for feeling, wow, they don't know this. Be patient with people. Well, we have to be extremely and we have to shut up and let the love of the Torah come through so they can trust that firstly, mm. you know? Yeah. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, number three, I didn't put them all in because some of them aren't sort of really relevant. The body of people who administer an organisation. Where is that? Who is that, Mark? Say it again. The body of people who administer an organisation. That's the priesthood. That's all of us. Mm -hmm. That's all the Israelites. That's everybody. Israel is a priesthood unto the nations. Do you think people that haven't been through boot camp and haven't passed becoming a soldier and know the plateau that they and the topography that they have to work in? Do you think they should be doing and saying what they're doing? No, they're just bubbies. So who is who? The body of people who administer an organisation. Where are they and who are they? <laughs> I don't know where they are. I, I can only think of a, on one hand of a few people who I would who I would respect. So, um, well, that's what's going on with everybody, hmm. you know. But there has to be a way that we can see who is and who isn't. Behavior. Who's, who's gifted and who? Yeah, behavior. Hmm. By understanding what he's saying to us. Number four, the conduct of the affairs of government. Behaviour. The, the conduct, yeah. Mm. Now, this is only the dictionary. Mm. This is not a Hebrew scripture or looking at the meaning in Hebrew. This is just our English dictionary. And what's it all pointing to, B? E? Yeah. Number six, the government as a whole. Where is it? Who is it? The conduct or disposal of the estate of a deceased. The conduct or disposal of the estate of a deceased. So what's the conduct, behaviour, disposal, how are they going to deliver it, the message, the, the besorah, the good news, of the estate of a deceased who who died. Mm. Mm. So he has shown us the behaviour mm. and he wants us to follow him. That's what Shaul says, to follow his behaviour, mm. to follow his example, to follow the example of Yahusha. Mm. <laughs> so when we look at this, we're looking at the word administration, you know, and it says um, don't pay attention to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than an administration of Elohim which is in belief. So we want to look at the administration of Elohim. Of course it comes through belief. But what's the administration? The behaviour. Mm. How should the behaviour be? Mm. You know, he won't leave us, he'll let us know. And the estate of a deceased, he's died for us and he's left an estate mm. and he wants that administrated correctly. Now, the Jews didn't do that no. or Israel didn't do it. So he divorced them and scattered them and he's calling them back again into a renewed covenant to learn how to behave. Behave his Torah, his instruction, how he wants us to behave. Mm. <laughs> right. B, oh, sorry, six. No? Yeah, B. That's B. That was A. This is B. The management by a trustee of an estate. Who's the trustee? 
Us. Who are we? We're the, yes. the yes. Israel. Yeah. yeah. True Israel has to get it together, get the administration going, get everything in order, and it all starts with be... Hydea. Be Hydea. Mm. Yeah. This is just a dictionary, mind you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blast. Isn't it? Yeah. Right. Um, the thing that is ministered, etc. So the thing that's ministered is... Behaviour. I believe. Yeah, Torah, mm. the instruction, mm. how to behave. Right, now here's the Hebrew. It says to hold possession, mm. head person, ruler. So who's holding the position? Who's the head person and the ruler of the administration? Yahusha. He's the? The head. Yeah. So being in true administration of the Nazarim assembly, we need to go through boot camp and come out as equipped, as an equipped soldier to be placed strategically in the battle. Question, where on earth and who on earth is in this administration that Yahusha has set up? Say that again. <laughs> so being in the true administration of the Nazarim assembly, right, mm -hmm. the true administration, we need to go through boot camp yep. and come out as an equipped soldier to be placed strategically in the battle. Question, where on earth and who on earth is the administration that Yahusha has set up. It's a very easy question. The Nazarim, Israel. Set, set. Who's the administration? Set. Set. Ruach. Ruach. Ha. Ha Kadesh. He's in us. Yeah. And he will teach us through the test, won't he? Yes. Oh, yes. He'll teach us through flogging and all that stuff mm. to come into the right behaviour. Yes. So we can be strategically placed, understanding the enemy, how the enemy works. And it's all in behaviour. So many people's vessels get invaded and their behaviour is abominable. Yeah? Mm. And... As natural, they're not keeping on their armour. They're not aware. They'll just fly off the handle at somebody and tell them off on the internet, which is disgusting behaviour. You don't do that. That's not how we're told in the scripture to behave. You see what I mean? They have knowledge and memory of verses, but they haven't dove, dived into the water. They haven't dived into the administration and come out with the qualifications knowing the behaviour and how strategic conduct is mm -hmm. and how important it is to manifest, you know, the fruits of the Spirit in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where we have to get to. We can't be lazy. We have to be enthusiastic and tell people about this. You imagine telling people about this? Oh. <laughs> how are they going to react to this? Yeah, hideous. Hey? Eh? Hideous. <laughs> well, all you can do is point him to this DVD mm. because mm. in the beginning he wishes us uh, compassion and favour and peace. He's giving his message to us that he loves us so very much. And he's going to envelop us with that. And his spirit, if we will lend our vessel to him and let him speak through us, he'll be before us and behind us. He'll tell us of the steps that he wants to take. Remember that old Jimmy Little song, Tell a phone to glory, I want joy to buy. <laughs> yeah. oh, I can feel the current moving on the line. <laughs> Yeah. So you've got to be in contact. 
Mm. And it's just communication. It's just conversation, knowing that he's there, that he loves us, that he has compassion for us, that he's excited, he desires us, he wants us to give in, to let him have us and go there. Yeah. What, Mark? Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I want to pass the plate. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Now that's verse 4, Mark. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and the the administration of Elohim, which is in belief, mm. rather than all the fi fables, endless fables and genealogies. The mm. administration. That's where everyone should be concentrating on now, instead of remembering scripture and quoting scripture at everyone, considering that as knowledge or wisdom that you can mm. outquote the best quota. Remember, it's like all those pastors used to lay hands and when they have a pastor's meeting, the pastor that was standing that didn't fall down in the spirit was the winner. <laughs> the same thing with the knowledge and the remembrance of scriptures. Yeah. That's, not even, that's not even what Torah is all about. No. That's just another, another madness, another dead-end street. You've got to dive into, into it. And you've got to experience it so you know it because there's only one way, there's only one experience, and it's the same for everyone. He doesn't hold special things for others. He's saying, jump in. Jump in. Don't remember the scripture. I'll give that to you. But it doesn't associate with what you're saying. Jump in. Yeah. Okay, verse 5. Now, the goal of this command, goal, here's that command again, the goal. This is our goal. He's saying to us, now, the goal of this command, he's giving us something here, is love from a clean heart, from a good conscience and a sincere belief. Sincere belief, what does that make you think of, mate? Good conscience, clean heart. What is that if you put them all together in one word? What is it? What's all the story about? What's it all about tonight? Behaviour. Can you see how those three things are behaviour? Yeah. It's all behaviour. Mm. This is the conduct, mm. the behaviour mm. he wants us to act in while we're on earth, as we're walking through the atmosphere. He wants us to be that, a clean heart, a good conscience and a sincere belief, genuinely believing mm. what he's laying before us, trusting him. Mm. It's what he mm. wants. That's all we have to do. Mm. How mm. exciting is this? Oh, How exciting, you know. Mm. Look, look what's coming to us. We can receive all this. And this is only five verses from one book. Yeah. And there's so much in there, isn't it? Mm. Right, number six. So now the goal, this is five. Now the goal of this command is love from a clean heart. That's the goal of the command from a good conscience and a sincere belief. That's a behaviour we're getting, which some have missed the goal turned aside to senseless talk. Yeah. What does that make you think of, senseless talk? Uh, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. should say senseless posting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Senseless talk, the missed, the goal. They can't dive in with a sincere belief. We have to make ourselves come to this place and we have to get those people that have come into the door and believe to realise, to understand what is there for them, not just quoting scriptures and postings. We have to do this in the world, in our behaviour, in our daily lives, not spending hours and hours and hours on the computer. But we need to do this in our daily lives and experience. Oh, Sean said to say hello. I know he's 
say hi to you, Marky. He, I know he's such a genuine guy. He's just telling everyone about Yahusha. Mm. He doesn't know, at, at work. He doesn't care. Mm. You know. Yeah. Of course, you learn. You learn as you go. Yeah. That's fine. And he's a lovely bloke, but he wanted me to remember to say hi to you. Yeah, it's lovely. Shaw says that while he's in the middle of these things, tells Timothy, someone said to say hi. <laughs> 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 ah, senseless talk. Wishing to be teachers of Torah, understanding neither what they say nor concerning what they strongly affirm. <laughs> They don't even know. They don't look at the scripture and see this. They're just remembering verses and that's knowledge. And being able to quote a verse at somebody in a situation to win the point is wisdom. <laughs> that's not what it's about, is it? No. See, that's where they're going. Uh, what sort of behaviour would you call that? A buffoon. <laughs> I don't Who? No. Uh, How many of them have you got? How many of childish, them? Childish, very childish. Uh -huh. yeah. That's and they just need help out of that to mm. enter into this experience by themselves with Yahusha to be tested by him, to be trialed by him, to come out as a soldier experienced in the warfare of behaviour. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think of this, Lou? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey? Yeah, wonderful. Right now, verse 8. <clears throat> and we know that the Torah is good if one uses it legitimately. Hmm. So we've had administration and now we're coming to legitimately. What do you think of when you hear legitimately? Or something, yeah, or something that's legitimate. It's not fake, it's, it's real. L E G A L. Oh, legal. Legal. Okay. And in the, in the dictionary, it says born in lawful wedlock. That's number one. Of course. Who is born in lawful wedlock? Children. And who do the children refer to? When do you get born? The immersion. Yeah, your immersion. Yeah. So you're born in lawful wedlock. Because you've been married. Yahusha was born before us in lawful wedlock, hmm. wasn't he? Yeah. Because Miriam and Joseph had already declared that they loved each other and they were going to be married. Hmm. Yeah? Yeah. So there's born in lawful wedlock. That's legitimate. Conforming to established standards of usage, behaviour. Conforming to established standards of usage, the way you use the Torah. Right? Because the Torah is a behaviour. Yes. Instruction on how to behave. And we know that the Torah is good if one uses it legitimately. It has to be used the right. right. Yeah. And that's a B. Behaviour. Yeah. yeah. Number three, based on correct or acceptable principles sorry, or acceptable principles of reasoning. Yeah. Mm. Based on correct, correct, or acceptable principles of reasoning. Mm. Unreasonable principles are no good, are they? No. Number four, authorised by or in accordance with law. Mm. It's all about the law, law legal Legitimately, legally, it's a legal thing. Legal. When you think of Yahusha and and <clears throat> and uh, Shemayim, where he is, what's legal? 
What's going to give you everlasting life? The right B behavior. Yeah. So the wrong behavior is illegal. Illegal. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All about behavior. Five. Of relating to or ruling by hereditary right. So that would be a king, wouldn't it? Mm. We know Yahushua's a king. A legitimate monarch. To make, pronounce or show to be legitimate. To make, pronounce or show to be legitimate by your be. Oh, yeah. When you're out there, you're showing the world the different behaviour, you're behaving Torah in public, you're announcing something and you're showing something mm. and it's legitimate because it's better than what they can behave, isn't it? Yeah. Do you want a glass of water or something? No, I'm good. <laughs> we're, we're up to how long have we been going? Uh, about uh, half an hour. <laughs> About a half an hour. We're only up to this verse. <laughs> it's all right. All right? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Oh. Just go for it. We can do two parts if you want. Whatever. We can do two no, parts. Whatever. I don't mind. One part. Right, so make legal from law. Uh, um... A legitimate queen, a wife, this is what the Hebrew says, a legitimate queen or wife. Who's the legitimate wife? Israel. Yeah. Hebrews is a mass of persons organised for war. This is what it means legitimately in Hebrew. Mass of persons organised for war. Now, do you think the Natsurim real the Messianics and the Natsurim realise this? No. Yeah. Battle company, host of soldiers, warfare. Oh no, sorry. We we'll forget about that. That's the next one. All right. Sure. That's coming in the next one, but it still associates with. Um, Legitimate, doesn't, uh, with, uh, what was it? Yeah, legitimate. Legitimately, yeah. Okay, we're going on to verse 9 now. Mm. So we can see that its administration is legitimately and it's legal and it's uh, organised and it's into warfare and battle and all this. And the real word for it all is be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Verse 9, knowing this, that Torah is not laid down for a righteous being. Did you know that? Torah is not laid down for a righteous being. It's not made for the righteous, laid but for the law. Hmm. Eh? Makes sense. It's not laid down for them. Hmm. It's laid down for the wicked and for sinners, for the wrongdoers and profane. For those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for those who whore <coughs> prostitution, for sodomites, that's homosexuals, male and female. They called them sodomites then. When I grew up, that was illegal. Mm. Today, look what they're trying to do, make it legal and make marriage from it. Mm. Well, it's totally the opposite to what... Uh, and this is why the Torah is laid down for them to see that it's wrong. It's mm. against what the Creator made man for. And that's what Satan wants to do. So you can see how much Satan is controlling the masses, can't you? Mm. And what he's pushing them to do. Go against everything that's been laid down. And all those gay people are missing out on what? they could have had or what they still could have if they repent. Mm. Yeah? Yep. For kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers and for whatever else is that is contrary to sound teaching. 
Contrary means go the opposite. <clears throat> so so many people out there going the opposite. So the Torah is laid down. The Torah is the whole book of instruction. Mm. And it's all about the... Behaviour. See all those behaviours? Mm. Lawless, unruly, wicked, sinners, wrongdoers, profane, those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for those who whore, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and for whatever else that is contrary to sound teaching. Mm. This is what we teach. This is the administration. This is all about correct behaviour, how Yahushua wants his bride, Israel, to behave and rebuke sin and tell the truth so everybody knows what's right and what's wrong. People are so afraid. You know, I saw that they want to <coughs> stop, stop people from smacking their children. They want to make it illegal. Yeah. And the scripture says, if you don't smack your child, you don't love them. Mm. It mm. also says, spare the rod and spoil the child. Mm. So mm. Satan wants all those things, the children to grow up just chaotic. Mm. You know, mm. you can even divorce your mother and father now. Children can do that. Mm. I saw a man who married his pillow. Yeah, that's right. You see that? Yeah. That's how mad it's all getting. Mm. <clears throat> Verse 11. According to the esteem, Besorah, the blessed Elohim, to the esteem, esteemed Besorah of the blessed Elohim. So this is the esteemed behaviour, the instruction, the Torah, behaviour, Besorah of the blessed Elohim, which was entrusted to me. So all this stuff has been entrusted to him. It's in being, being entrusted to us. It's coming to us. Yahushua's opening this for us, for all of us to know the correct behaviour so we can't be wrong, so we can live in it. We can live in it safely. We can live in it protected by the boundaries of Torah and the blessings of Torah will come on us if we stop Satan from getting in amongst us by everyone understanding what is the correct behaviour and what is not. And it's only just beginning tonight as we go through this. We're only just beginning to see it. <clears throat> Verse 12, And I thank Messiah Yahushua, our Master, who empowered me because he counted me trustworthy, putting me into service. Now, he's supposed to go out and tell everyone all this stuff. He's been put into service. Army, again? Mm. Army, it's an army. He's been put into service. Mm. You know, he's in the army and the army is the behaviour and he's going out there telling everybody about the correct behaviour and not to give in and get the message out so everyone understands and get the message out in loving kindness so they know that the messenger is just the person giving the instruction. That's the messenger. Mm. He's, not, he's not the one that's going to judge you or tell you you're wrong or anything. He's just giving the word. It's up to each individual to grasp this, to take it into their heart and be genuine and dive in mm. to the behaviour, mm. learn the new behaviour. Learn what he wants us, not just to remember scriptures, you know, but to get into it in our daily life. <clears throat> it's time to get out of the cot. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. So here's the service again. It's mentioned, military, administration, legal. It's all legal. This is all legal. But it's a belief. It's not how the world behaves. It's not what they do. We say, come out of her, my people, and learn the correct behaviour so your life will be blessed. You won't be caught up in Satan's tricks. You won't be caught up in Satan's deceits. You will be able to walk 
in freedom and peace and have favour from the Creator where he desires you, loves you, you know, but it's up to us to please him by going there. Verse 13, <clears throat> me, although I was former, formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and an insulter, but compassion was shown to me because being in ignorant, I did it in unbelief. See the difference? Mm. And favour of our master was exceedingly increased with belief and love which are in Messiah Yahusha. See what's in Messiah Yahusha? Mm. Favour will be exceedingly increased with belief and love which are in him. Trustworthy is the word. You can believe all this. You can trust in it and it works. If you go out and do it, you start this behaviour, it will work. You won't lose. You will know the way to be. You'll be happy because you can see the things that you say come about. It's wonderful. Um, trustworthy is the word and worthy of all acceptance that Messiah Yahushua came into the world to save sinners of which I am foremost. And it's all about behaviour. You can see Shaul changed his behaviour, didn't he? Yeah. Came into the administration and he understood what he was called out to be and do. Mm. That's all we have to understand. He's called us out to adopt this, to take it on, to make a new life, to become this, and it's all in our behaviour. There's a way out of all the misery and sin. There's a way out. Everyone can be delivered because he loves everyone. Verse 16, but because of this I receive compassion so that in me first Yahushua Messiah might display all patience. So he wasn't patient. He was grabbing the, the believers and throwing them into jail and killing them as an example to those who are going to believe because of the change in him, on him for everlasting life. What are we going to believe on him for? Everlasting life. That's the end of verse 16. Verse 17. Now to the sovereign of the ages, incorruptible, invisible, to see, he's incorruptible and he's invisible. To Elohim, who alone is wise. No one's wise. We can tap into the wise by listening to him and he will instruct us and show us what to do and we will experience that wisdom. But he has the wise, not us. Mm. It doesn't stay. It's with him. We can tap into it when it's necessary for he wants to use us. Be respect and esteem forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This charge I entrust you, son Timothy. <clears throat> Timothy's getting a charge. He's getting charged to do this. Mm. It's very military type talk, isn't it? Mm. According to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you might wage the good campaign. Mm. Hey, campaign. Yeah. <clears throat> What's campaign? A war strategy. War strategy. Yeah. This is the Hebrews one. Massive persons. Organised for war. This is the one I read out by mistake. Battle company, host of soldiers, warfare. That's in the Hebrew. That's what a campaign is. So here, Timothy has to wage a good campaign. <clears throat> so in the dictionary it says a series of coordinated activities such as public speaking, mm. designed to achieve a social, political or commercial goal. Now, can you imagine 
having a strategy against the arm um, uh, against the enemy and getting in contact with all the messianics and say yeah this came from Yahusha we he wants us this and that and that <laughs> the fit would hit the shan <laughs> tell you. So you can see where we are. Yeah. We need, we need to get this administration yeah. going because we have to. Um, Why do you campaign? Yeah, and if we're not, if we, yeah, if we let this go, what? If we don't all move into this and move on, what? We're useless. And what's going to happen to us? Well, if you're useless and you're not bearing any fruit, you get cut off eventually. See, wheat and the tears. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to run the race <clears throat> by waging a good campaign. Mm. We have to do this. We have to win. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'll read that part again. As public speaking designed to achieve a social, a series of coordinated activities such as public speaking designed to achieve a social, political or commercial goal. And we, of course, can put that into um, the spiritual uh, administration of Yahusha, can't we? Yeah. A presidential campaign, it's like that. A number of operations aimed at achieving a simple objective. A number of operations aimed at achieving a simple objective. Three, to conduct, serve in or go on a campaign. <clears throat> so obviously we are called to undertake a campaign where there is an adversary, a hateful, spiteful enemy who will do everything he can to kill us. Mm. And uh, are the children of Israel, the called out ones now, completely aware of this enemy that wants to destroy us and is working against us all the time? No. And how much in tune are we with Yahusha in our life? Or do we take upon it our take upon ourselves, oh, I'll do that, I'll fix that, this, and not listening. Because mm. he has a way with everything. He wins everything. But we have, this is why the obedience, <clears throat> I think obedience is love myself. I think obedience is a harsh way for, they just used that word then in those days, to be obedient to it. It didn't have the connotations it's got now, like slavery. You know, obedience is like slavery. It's lost what it really did mean in that time. I think obedience is love. You do it out of love. Because what's the use of being alive without listening and feeling his love and having his favour and watching him work before you and behind you and seeing that you're protected and looked after and he's encouraging you to speak out, to come in and, and to serve him more. You know, what? what is life without his presence? Mm. Nothing. You know, it's just nothing. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's the, the first chapter telling us about, you know, how it is, what's in front of us, what's going on, you know? Got something to say? Oh. Don't just say it's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. Have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so true with what's been going on. Um, I feel like uh, in my life the campaign has become more um, on the home front. Uh, spent many, many years looking outward and putting out things. Yeah. And um, built up a lot of material there now for anybody to reference and now I've kind of turned inward and looked at all the people in my home and then the test came in as well and yeah I um I started thinking well, why on earth is my behavior so bad 
Um, you felt behaviour bad. Yeah, and I realised it's not that it's like I feel like it's getting worse. It's not that. It's that I'm waking up. Um, yeah. You start bringing the test in, and you um, you just start realising how hideous you treat people. Um, and yeah, you, you get very pestered. Um, and you think, oh, that's yeah, and you think to yourself, well, I don't feel like this when I'm by myself. I don't feel any of this pressure, any of this pestering, any of this, you know, I don't feel like the hideous person I am when everybody else is around, running around and being mad and doing what children do. So you realise that under pressure, you, you're not a very good example and everybody copies my behaviour then and so it's just bouncing off each other. Why do you so, think you're getting the pressure? Because of the behaviour. Yeah. 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 So I think there's a reason I've been turned inward and looking at my camp. Well, how does this help? Oh, totally. It gives you, well, what you said right from verse 1 about knowledge, you might get a spare half an hour or whatever and you might hear it and say, oh, why don't you get into the Torah? And you think, oh, well, I know what's in there. I know, yeah, it'll tell me I've got to do this and this and this and this and this. Yeah, I've got to do this. So I'll just feel worse about myself. Yeah. Uh, like, Whereas your that knowledge, it's not like that. It's it's a living thing coming to you. Like you said, diving in the water yeah. gives you strength. Yeah. So if you're never in there, because I got lots of head knowledge, we all do. So then yeah. you think, well, I don't don't feel like adding any more to my head knowledge today. I'm okay, thank you. Too much to remember. Yeah, too much to remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Whereas um, you strip away all that. And you realise that it's actually him just talking to you. Yeah. So what? You don't want Yahushua to talk to you today? <laughs> That's what it's like. Um, yeah. So you yeah. don't you don't feel full. You don't have the love or the strength to yeah. deal to deal with all the immature, childish behaviour that's around yeah. you, because they yeah. are immature children. So, yeah. and then you end up becoming like one of them. Uh, and you just kind of get sucked into it. Um, you're not looking at it's just spirits flying everywhere, bouncing off everybody. Yeah. And uh, so that's where, and it's on my mind constantly. Amy and I are always talking about how do we get this situation better? How do we, uh, you know, so sort of worked out, you know, sending them to school doesn't help. Sending, you know, everything. You start breaking down everything in their life. So what's causing this and what's causing that? And, you know, different components that are in the food, that thing's setting that one off and that thing's, you're breaking it all down. But on the whole, it's all about how mummy and daddy behave and it's, is there love there and joy there or is there not? Is there pressure and, you know, anger and so it's stepping away from the internet in a big way has been a big inward, like a campaign, looking, yeah. at, looking at where I'm really at because everybody can present themselves in a certain way on the internet and that's fair enough if you're putting out the teaching and everything else, but Yahushua actually wants to deal with my life, my family, because mm. I know if somebody saw my work on the internet and was, for instance, travelling through and said, oh, I want to go and meet them, oh, they get the shock of their life, you know, because this is the harsh reality of having five kids, you know, this is, you know and those who have it will understand, but I, yeah, that's what I'm feeling like. It's, it really is. It's about behaviour. It's all about behaviour. So what's your problem with your kids? Behaviour. Yeah? Yeah. Behaviour. So you, who's just spoken to you tonight? Mm. All you have to do to teach them is? Love. Behave the right way. Yeah. Who just says is right and what he says is wrong. Mm. That behaviour is from Satan. Mm. We've got to be just genuine. There is a Satan. There are demons. We have to tell our kids. Mm. If we don't, they're not going to know. They just think it's themselves and they'll be deceived and they'll just do everything they can to antagonise you, stir you up. Mm. You have to sit down with them like I'm doing with you. Mm. Tell them about the demons. Mm. They're really there. Only like Daddy and Mummy can. Mm. You say now, do you think Yahushua would want that? 
Mm. And you got to spend that time. I'm not going to sit. I'm not a dog. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, you know, mm. you've got the time. Yeah. And you just do it as you go. Mm. As they get older, they'll understand things more. They'll be watching the older boys mm. and they'll mm -hmm. see your relationship with them and they'll start to understand behind you. Mm. You've got to get the leader of the pack. Yeah. Then you're right. Yeah. And speak to him. When you speak to him, they'll all be listening. Because <laughs> you don't speak to them like you speak to him. Mm. Yeah. That's quite you, say, well, you have you have to earn you have to earn the relationship that I that Josiah's got with me. You have to earn that. Mm. That makes him realise there's something different. Mm. And he'll want to please you. They all want to please you, but they don't know how. And it's in their be that's going to please you. Mm. Going to please your hoosha and mummy. Mm. Yeah. So you've got to teach them the behaviour. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. Wonderful. Isn't it good? Yeah. There's a lot in there, isn't there, when you know the background of Torah and you've had experience. Now, the next one we're going to go into, what's the time now? 9.29. That's right. Is it too long? That's fine. That's only one chapter. <laughs> yeah. It's not a very long chapter, right. I hope. The second one is uh, Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and this is about women. Yeah. Now, how long have you been hairdressing, Mark? 20 years. <laughs> so you've had 20 years of experience I've had about 43 years of experience with women. Yep. Right? Yeah. So we know what we're talking about, <laughs> don't we? 63 years between us. <laughs> now, before we start, I'd like to say that there is a behaviour from worldly women. That's women that are not in Torah. Mm. Now, what would Yahusha call a woman that's not in Torah. A whore. That's right. So here again we're going to look at... The right behaviour. Yeah. So I want all the women to understand that this is a different thing. We're talking about um, the behaviour of worldly women and the behaviour of natural women. And there's still a lot of the world in the natural natural women at the moment. Mm. And, of course, we all have to clean out. And the instruction is put there for us to clean out. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> now, there, there is a spirit in women. It's called the mother spirit. Mother church. Mother spirit, oh, no one understands like the mother does. Oh, the mother has rights that, the, that nobody else has. Only a mother can do it. The mother knows how they really feel. The mother this and the mother that. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's the stronghold mm -hmm. for women, worldly women. Mm -hmm. And they stick to that no matter what happens and they give themselves rights of behaviour because of the stronghold mindset that has them locked up. And they're angry if this behaviour is mentioned. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but this is worldly women we're talking about, not the Nazarene women. The Nazarene women have a direction which is here tonight. And we hope that it's going to be of value and benefit to each and every one of the beautiful princesses of Yahusha. Yeah. yeah. First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all men. First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers... 
intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all men. For sovereigns and those and all those who are in authority in order that we lead a calm and peaceable life in all reverence and seriousness. That's what we have to do. We have to pray. We have to have petitions to Yahusha, prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving for all men, for sovereigns and all those who are in authority. In order, he comes the behaviour that we lead a calm and peaceful life in all reverence and seriousness. Now, do you see the women of the world, the clients that come in today in that behaviour? No. It's arrogant, it's whorish, and it's just awful, isn't it? Okay. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable before Elohim our Saviour. So that's good and acceptable to do that. So we know that should be our behaviour. That is our prayer life. It's good and it's acceptable. He accepts us and he loves it if we do that. Yeah? Yeah. Verse 4, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's his desire. The desire of Elohim is for all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the... That's diving on the diving board and diving into it in belief. The administration of Yahusha. Going in there, not just remembering scriptures and walking around with long robes on, having the best memory and can knock everyone out with a quote. Mm. That's not the knowledge, is it? Verse 5, for there is one Elohim and one mediator between Elohim and men, the man, Messiah, Yahusha. So there's only one mediator that we can go through. That's Yahushua Messiah that came down. It's Elohim himself came down and went back. He's sitting on his throne in Shemayim. That's Shemayim means where he is. It's another dimension. Not far from us. It's just another dimension. Because the scroll's going the sky is going to roll back like a scroll and he's going to come through. Isn't that another dimension? Yeah. If it's going to roll open. Again, he's going to come through with his army mm. when he returns. Mm. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Okay, we're going to verse 4. Sorry, verse 6. So Messiah, who gave himself a ransom for all to be witnessed in its own seasons, who gave himself a ransom for all. He paid the price, didn't he? The ransom, he paid the price for all of us. And to be witnessed in all in its own seasons. What would that be? The seasons could be the pointed times. Yeah. Hmm. For which I was appointed a proclaimer and an emissary. He was appointed to be a proclaimer and an emissary. And that's what he's doing. And that's the administration. This is the campaign we need to be bringing. I am speaking the truth in Messiah and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in belief and truth. So it can only be in belief and it can only be in truth. And he's a teacher of the Gentiles, not of the... the um, not of the tribes there. Yeah, Yahudim. So verse 8, So I resolve that the men pray everywhere, that the men pray everywhere, lifting up hands that are set apart without wrath and disputing. Mm. So I resolve that the men pray everywhere, 
lifting up hands that are set apart without wrath or disputing. Lifting up hands. It just means to be clean, to be genuine, yeah. to be not walking around, you know, because we don't do that, do we, in the streets, hailing, you know, lifting up our hand. That's not the way, is it? No. So again, it's a B. Behaviour. Yeah? Be clean and genuine and beautiful. Mm. <clears throat> so without wrath and disputings. So our behaviour again has to be without anger and disputing. Mm. Yeah? Sometimes it's all right to be angry, but you don't let it lead you into sin. Mm. You can show mm. that you're angry, especially with the kids. You can show them that you're angry, mm. you know, but you don't let it lead, lead you into sin. You don't let the sun go down on your anger. Mm. You clear it up before you go to sleep, especially with the kids, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Here we go, ladies. Likewise, verse 9 that the women dress themselves becomingly mm. with decency and sensibleness. So, ladies, you have to dress yourself becomingly. What does becomingly mean? Uh, when I looked it up, it said suitable, so you don't you know, have your boobs all pushed up and big cleavage showing. That's not, that's not how a woman dresses. She, it says, um, Torah says, which is instruction, that a woman shouldn't dress herself to attract the attention of the opposite sex. Mm. So women shouldn't be dressing like a whore. You know, too much flounciness, too much, too much, too much. Mm. So a woman has to tone it down and be beautiful in herself. Yeah. That's, that's for all women. Mm. You know, there's no excuses. Yeah. No excuses at all to show a cleavage. No excuses to wear a tight-fitting top because it arouses men. To, to wear see-through stuff so they can see you. Mm. You know, it's all right in the arms, mm. but, you know, too short addresses and things that are very sexual, yeah. that's how whores dress. Yeah. That's not a natural woman. That's a worldly woman. And everything is okay. That's why the Muslims are off their face mm. with, with Western women. You know, so all those things, you don't go and get plastic surgery and do all that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> to your face, I mean, big puffy lips and all that. Ugh. Mm. So these are the things that Yahusha wants the women to know. Victoria, my wife, said, said, oh, the, everyone's too afraid. I said, well, darling. I'm going to be telling the ladies tonight. She said everyone's too afraid to tell them. Mm. You know, the men are too afraid to speak to their wives and tell them. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Suitable and appropriate. And in the Hebrew, suitable means to be beautiful, pleasant or suitable. Become comely. And that means to behave, right? Mm. So becomingly means suitable and appropriate. Mm. And it means to behave. So what's suitable and appropriate is your behaviour. Women? in the Natsurum organisation, ministration, have to know about their behaviour. They do not behave like the worldly women, which is whorish. They behave in gentleness and sweetness, as we'll see. 
Comely means to make well, literally, sound beautiful or figuratively. Happy, successful, right, be accepted, amend. Women have to make sure they're accepted. They have to make sure they amend all situations. Use a right. Whatever they're doing, they've got to do it the right way. Again, a behaviour. Benefit. To be a benefit to your husband and your family. Be better than the worldly women. Make cheerful. Be comely and be content. Mm. Diligent. Be diligent in the things you do. And it's got commas, diligently. Dress. How you dress is a big thing. You don't dress to show your body off. That is inappropriate. That is not how you behave. That's how the worldly women behave. Mm. It's not how Natsurim behave. Earnestly you have to be women, ladies. Find favour. Give. You have to be a giving person. And to be glad. You must be glad to do, be, make, good, and in brackets, ness, goodness. Do goodness. This is how the Natsurim women should be. Victoria said no one's game enough to tell them. But here we have 60 years, Mark, between us, us, and this is what they need to be told. Be, and in brackets, make, to be merry, to make merry, make others merry, to please, to show more kindness, skillfully, make sweet, thoroughly, and the Oxford Dictionary says, good looking. So the dictionary says it's good looking. So the behaviour will be good looking. How much about behaviour is that? Totally. Okay. Mm. So that was suitable. Mm. And here we have appropriate, becomingly. I'll go back to becomingly. Likewise, in verse 9, that the women dress themselves becomingly. Dress themselves is not only clothes, but be... Behaviour. Dress yourself in the correct behaviour. Know how the master wants you to be. What a fine woman is. It's nothing to do with physical appearance. You know, you dress correctly, but the beauty of your behaviour just shows amazing intelligence. If you do that, mm. you know, if you don't do it, yeah. you're, not going to, you're not going to experience what he has for you. Mm. So this mm. is where the women have to dive in. They have to dive into this behaviour for themselves to achieve these things that are written down. You know, you, you have to achieve them for yourself so that everyone around you will see there's something different, something amazing. And the more individuals we have realising how they have to live and be alive in their life by the correct behaviour, then we're going to really see something happen. Mm. But until the men and the women, there's lots, more, lots of stuff here for the guys too, girls. Don't just think I'm hammering you. I'm not. I'm trying to open a door so you can see where you can go to be blessed. Remember Hebrews 31, is it, about a good wife? Have a read over that and see the blessings that a woman can achieve in her life by applying the right behaviour and conduct. You will have the blessing of Yahushua Messiah on you in everything you do. Mm. It's very exciting if you come out of the whore, behaviour, behaviour, behaviour. Yeah. Come out of the wrong behaviour into the right behaviour. So the two words for becomingly are suitable and appropriate. 
appropriate in Hebrew says suitable, proper, be straight, be honest, faithfulness, be in order, everything in order and clean, perfect, ready, be ready to be used by Yahushua, be right, set, be stable, stand. So that's what it is in <coughs> Hebrew. How amazing is it, ladies, to be given these instructions and to know that, as it said before, you can trust in the word. Mm. You can trust yourself no matter what anyone says. If you start doing this behaviour, there's going to be amazing things happen around you and you'll be so excited. You will know what living is and how to live correctly and how to be alive and how to be enjoying it because what you're doing is working and it's fabulous and wonderful. And all we have to do is modify our behaviour as to how Yahushua is giving us the instruction. If we do these things, they will work. We won't fail. Aren't you sick of failing over and over and over again? How wrong are you girls? How wrong inside yourself? You lose all the time. You're disappointed. You get miserable and depressed because of the things you undertake to do and they fail. But if you get with Yahushua's instruction for yourself, you take it on take it on board and dive into it, then you're going to experience the water of life and you're going to love it. It's just wonderful. Mm. Now, <clears throat> appropriate was the last one, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. The dictionary says, not a proper time for singing. Girls, see how that's explained that? Appropriate. It, sometimes it's not the proper time for singing. It's inappropriate. Yeah. There are things that we do, the girls do, that aren't appropriate. You don't do them anymore. They can't catch you out making you look foolish because you won't. Mm. Two, correct according to the rules. The proper way to hold the bat according to the social conventions. Respectable. This is it, girls. This is the direction you need to go in to really please Yahushua and to, as I said before, enjoy your life. Now we're up to... Verse 9, likewise that women dress themselves becomingly, so you figured out what all, all that means, with decency. Decency means respectable behaviour in society. Again, decency is a behaviour. Right. Um, with decency and sensibleness. Work it out before you open your mouth. Make sure it's right. Not with braided hair or gold or of pearls or costly garments, but with good works. And Torah tells you what good works are, behaviour and other things that you do for other people, which is becoming for women, undertaking worship of Elohim. So your behaviour is actually worship. Worship. Your behaviour, girls, is actually your worship. Did you know this? That's for you, girls. That's for you, girls. Isn't it wonderful? You know that your behaviour is worship. I said to Victoria, my wife, darling, even when you're washing up, if you're washing up with the right attitude and you're doing it unto your Hersha, you will enjoy it. You'll feel great when it's done. It's not a burden. And, you know, Victoria, she's been going for years and years and years, mm -hmm. serving people, helping people. You know, she's still going, running the fort. We came home from Cairns today. You have to go and see the... Uh... Oh, the Pacific Rim. No, 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 the other one. 
Um, Wolverine. Oh, you didn't. Yeah, it was oh, great. <laughs> that was really good. Worth worthwhile seeing. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> what was I saying? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you enjoy it. Uh, you if you do yeah, it. Yeah, she came home. She came home. She hopped on the ride on mower. Did that and did the edges and other things out there while I'm just, you know, going through this and talking to people on the internet because I can't do it with my back. Mm. You know? but I'm getting stronger. Things are better. And so, you know, she's wonderful. She's just amazing. I love her. Yeah. Now. I was thinking, um, came the other day, if you're constantly doing things for other people or looking for reaction from other people, all you end up is angry. Yeah. As if you do everything unto Yahusha, you you don't care if they appreciate it or not. That's it. Well, letting people have it, whatever they want, is boring, but you're loving them. Mm. And that's all we have to do, love people. Yeah. So verse 9, likewise, that the women dress themselves becomingly with decency and sensibleness, not with braided hair or gold pearls or costly garments, but with good works, which is becoming for women undertaking worship of Elohim. Okay, that's the way to worship Elohim, ladies. Not dress the other way, but dress the way he wants you to do. And, and it's all a behaviour. Behave respectably. The women of the world, I am mother, mother this, mother that. The mother knows you can't go against the mother. She, you know, that's not the right behaviour, girls. So if you can put that off and just be as you who she wants you, you're going to be very successful. Let a woman learn in silence in all subjection. <clears throat> Let a woman... Learn in silence in all subjection. Yeah. <laughs> men laugh at this and men tease women with this. Yeah. But you can see they were unruly in this um, Day. this uh, assembly. Yeah. They yeah. were very unruly and they just yelled out and said what they wanted to and took liberties that they were married to that man so they can do or say or behave how they want to. No, it's all about behaviour. And so this is what he's saying. Let women, let a woman learn in silence in all subjection. That's the right behaviour to learn in, you know, not yelling out and talking. That's what they were doing. So he's not having a crack at women and any man that says it that way is wrong. Yeah. But I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, rather to be in silence. Because they were butting in, they were saying, no, I don't agree with that, blah, 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 blah. No, they were very unruly women, worldly women. They had to, they had to change, modify their behaviour to suit the economy of um, Yahusha. Um, <clears throat> Verse 13, because Adam was formed first, then Hawa, Chua. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, having been deceived, fell into transgression. Transgression is a word we should all understand in the Hebrew. It means treachery. How many times have you wanted your woman to flow with you and she double crossed you and made you look foolish and blah -de blah that is just a bondage that she's in, that's the worldly behaviour. That's not how a wife reacts to Yahusha. We are the wife. We do that to him. So he's talking about the women, how they behave. It's really all of us. And we just want us to be treacherous and falsehood. Everything's false. It's not genuine. It's not real. It's got to be a genuine belief, a genuine relationship, a genuine communication. It's a trespass. 
It's a revolt. This is the word transgression, rebellion and sin. <clears throat> so he says in verse 14, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, having been deceived, fell into transgression. So she fell into all those things. The dictionary says to break a rule or law, to go beyond a limitation in, in brackets, to sin, to go beyond what she's supposed to. How many women in this world today, I'm not talking about Nazarene women, go beyond, go too far with everything. Verse 15, but she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in belief, love and set-apartness with sensibility. So there you are, darlings. That's how he wants us to be. You've got to continue in belief, love and set-apartness with sensibleness. That's for the ladies tonight. we finished those two chapters. That's all we've got to share. So the ladies can think on these behaviours. It's all about behaviour. Love you all. Have a great week. You who are blessed. So be it. Central's never busy, always on the line. You can hear from heaven almost any time. Tis a royal service built for one and all. When you get in trouble, give this royal line a call. Telephone to glory, oh what joy divine. I can feel the current moving on the line. Made by God the Father for his very own. You may talk to Jesus on this royal telephone.